Hi everyone, this is Marjorie Freeman. She is the uh, community manager for the Enable Architect site, a uh, community site for Red Hat. And today she's gonna be talking about technical writing and how you don't really have to be a technical writer to write technically. Exactly. Perfect. Take it away. Well, thank you, Amy Jude. Um, so hi everyone. Um, half of my team is here and I see some new faces. So I'm happy everyone was able to make it today. Um, my talk is uh, a unique one in that I am an end user of Drupal, so I, I don't really, you know, not really on the technical side, but I do work with a lot of developers and engineers and architects on a daily basis and learn about what you do through um, your articles. And I just, a big part of my job as community manager is encouraging people to share more about what they do because it's important because you educate people. And I just want to encourage people to continue to do it and know that you don't have to be a technical writer to write technical. So what we'll discuss today, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, what I do and why I'm here. Um, and then I'll also dispel some of the myths about writing. Um, and I'll share um, a method I share with my authors to help them become writers. Um, and then I'm going to open it up to you guys and um, ask what you do. And then I'll translate um, that interest element, because the point of me asking is letting you know that you don't have to write a whole, whole encyclopedia for something to be interesting. It can just be taking something so small and creating a wonderful story out of it. Um, and so I'll get started. So. My name is Marjorie, the community manager for Enable Architect. Um, I chose this picture because I am an artist. I would say that's probably where I am the most technical, so I'm like a self-taught graphics designer and I draw. Um, and I kind of got into this role as a result of that. Um, my team found me like during COVID and I had been laid off and I remember where I was when I got the email from from Nat. I was in a Michael's parking lot buying uh, colored pencils, and um, um, the team had seen my my graphic design website and was like, "Hey, we have a position open," and um, you know the rest is history. And now I'm here. Um, so, as a community manager. Um, it's basically my job to kind of bridge the gap between the editorial, which is like a fancy word for publication, and um, the community of writers. So I, I don't know what context people have about community management from um, you know another organizational standpoint, but it's basically my job at Enable Architect to connect my engineers and my architects and create a space that's safe for them to, to share more about what they do. So um, backing up a little bit, my team, my whole team is called Digital Communities. Um, it's comprised of four different community sites. So Enable Sysadmin, OpenSource.com, and Enterprises Project. Um, and Enable Architect is like the baby of the team. So it started in 2020. Um, and um, it's since grown to almost we're like like we're at like 800,000 page views now um, and tons of unique visitors growing the newsletter you know all the community stuff but I'm not really here to talk about Enable Architect I just wanted to give a little bit of background as to what I do and how I work with technical writers to get their work published. So, um, so the first step is identifying your story. Like, what do you want to write about? Um, that's always the hardest part. So you know how you might be in an interview or you might be on a date or something, I don't know, and the person asks you like, so what do you like to do? And I'm like, well, I'm kind of a grandma, you know. I don't, I don't really do anything really interesting. So this will be like my something I'll go through. Like my favorite color is black. I like the Lion King. Uh, I tried getting a puppy. That used to say I had a puppy. 
changed you. I tried. Um, <laughs> I'll share more about that later. Um, and then you're like, and they're staring at you, and they're like, okay, like, is that all? Like, is there more to that? Um, and you're sitting there, and you're just like, thank you, computer. Um, well, I don't really know what else to say. Um, and you have to like dig within yourself and find something interesting. But it doesn't have to be that deep. So what I want to start with is how you can you know, find your story and find something compelling that people want to hear about. Um, so first, forget what you thought you knew about technical writing. Um, a lot of, so there are certain things that I hear on a daily basis from people who haven't published before. And one of them is, I've never written before, so I won't be any good. Um, I won't get tons of page views, because they might feel like, well, who wants to hear about, I don't know, managed Kubernetes or something like that. Um, I'm not a technical writer, so why bother? And I always tell them, like, First of all, I mean, the cliche, like, you don't know unless you try, but beyond that, um, just take a minute and step back and think about first what you want to do and what your message, what you want your message to be. So I, I gleaned a lot of these tips from my own community, other managing editors, my, um, my technical reviewer, Seth Kinlon, who works for opensource.com, um, and these are just great tips that help me even when I'm writing. Um, so the first one, know your audience, your intent, and your message. And that was actually from Smirdy. She gave that her. Um, she's the managing editor for developers.redhat.com. Um, present your main ideas early on because you want to engage people in that first, like really that first paragraph because you want the ideas for them to keep reading and to get to that actionable advice. Um, choose clarity over brevity. So people have in mind that, okay, they're not gonna get through the whole article and, and, or because the, they might be bored or something, so let me make this as short as possible. But if you make it short and they kind of left with nothing afterwards, I mean, what's the point? So you wanna be as clear as possible. Um, when planning your subject, start out by writing the three steps required to do the thing. So really, no matter what you're writing about, and it doesn't have to be three, it can be three, it can be four or five, but make sure the advice you're giving is concise and easy to read. Um, and don't write for the whole world, write to one person. So I do this a lot where um, I'll be like, we like to do this, or we like the color red, or you don't want to generalize and assume that whoever you're reading is a developer or an engineer or an architect. You want to write so that um, a librarian, I don't know, <laughs> will understand what you're talking about in the best way that you can with a reason. Um, and so now that you know, I've gotten through a little bit of the tips. I'm going through this really fast, I'm sorry. This is what happens when like, the heart is pumping. Um, so now that you've, you've gotten a few tips and you're at the point where it's like, all right, I got the pen, I got the paper, I think I'm ready to start putting down some of my thoughts. You may be wondering like, okay, so am I writing a a short news story, am I writing an opinion piece or a thought piece, am I writing a listicle or um, kind of like an instructional piece or an analytical article or a guide. When authors come to me and they're like, well, what should I write, I, the first thing I ask them is, well, you know, what do you like to do? Because on my team, personally, like, it's, we have to, you know, we have editorial guidelines that we have to comply to. But we give a lot of people creative freedom because you don't want to cycle that. Um, and it really just depends because it's really not about the character account. It's about like the substance. And if something is too long, you can always split it up. If something needs to be added to it, you can add to it. 
you just don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole before you even start it. So this just adds a little bit more context about the kinds of articles you can write, but don't you know get too lost in that. So um, my my manager Lori Hein, who is the managing editor, that's her title for for the team. Um, she worked she worked with an um, enterprises project, which is like CIO.com, and developed a writer's template, which is basically a way for people to take an idea and frame their their thoughts and slowly create a story from only a couple sentences. So my current like personal project is like just continuing to iterate on that document. Um, and we call it the writer's template. And it starts out with the introduction, which is always the hardest part, getting started. Um, and this isn't really something that you would put in the article, but it is important to address, like, who am I? Who am I? Um, am I representing someone? Am I a PR person? Do I have a client that's interested in writing? Um, and if I'm the person writing, um, what, what do I, it helps you identify what exactly you want to get out of it. I know working with a lot of architects um, and engineers, a big thing for them is brand building and kind of reinforcing their knowledge, you know, because they work with clients and customers all the time. And they need to kind of have another way to showcase their expertise. Um, so I use Marcus, who is amazing as uh, an example. He is a developer strategist at Red Hat um, of just, I would say, a success story of um, my writer's template. So Marcus w was a speaker at a small Red Hat event for Red Hat OpenShift on AWS. And I don't think he's written before, but I just kind of emailed him and I was like, hey, I know you and your partner spoke at um, this event and we would like to hear more about it. Um, and so that was, I just put the emails there because it just shows how like it was, I, it was completely random. I was like, hey, I'm interested in this. I want to hear more about it. And he was like, hey, it would be great. You know, I would really be interested in writing. And I pitched the template and I was like, you know, this is, this is how to do it. And he jumped right in. It did take two months, but like I said, you can't rush perfection. Um, and it ended up being something that he was very proud of. Um, and he's on his third article for us, and it's been less than a month since um, it's been published. And these are the kind of things that, as a community manager, I live for because it's like, wow, like I guess, you know, saw this from start to finish, like this person had never published before. And I mean, that was, I mean, I don't know how long, it had been live for 19 hours, but I think when I, he had emailed me that, it had been retweeted like over 100 times. So it's really not about the number, it's just about seeing somebody's work being shared. So I took his, his template and just threw it on the slide, but, um, one of the questions that we ask for the introduction is um, to describe in one sentence a key problem that you'd like to address. Um, and you know, he his topic was on managed Kubernetes, and he gave the sentence. And then, um, what are two sentences that address why the problem is important to who you're trying to speak to? And um, because it's an architect site, and he is a developer strategist, he did frame his article in a way that would resonate with a less hands-on user, but somebody who may have a team of developers that he works with. Um, and then, you know, share one or two sentences about why this is the type of advice that these people would find useful. And then from there, once he filled this out, he went on to the body, which is like, Another hard part, but once you've kind of laid out like, okay, this is what it is, you can start kind of gleaning like 
the important takeaways that you want people to, to leave with after they're done reading. Um, and you, like I said, you don't, it can be more than three. You just want them to be, um, what's the word, like, precise. You, you don't want to have too many, and it's okay if you have one, but it is possible also to combine some, but he just happened to have three subheadings. Um, you know, a managed Kubernetes platform gives you centralized information. A managed Kubernetes platform gives you self-service options. It allows you to deploy once and deploy everywhere. Um, reduces the time spent on writing YAML, um, and it gives you built-in security. And this this article was um, it was brief, but it left um, like this. Seth, who is our technical reviewer, he after he read this, he was like, "This is information that I can take and I want to use for myself." And we were like, "Yeah, we definitely we definitely want to publish this." Oh gosh, y'all are seeing all my stuff. Okay. All right, and so now that you've gotten the takeaways, you are almost at your conclusion, which is like a great feeling because it's like, okay, I'm, I'm there. Um, but it can be difficult because you either want to write more or you don't really know how to close it out. Um, and that was all his conclusion really was. And sometimes when we do like speaker write-ups, which is where like I reached out to Marcus to talk about his talk, we'll point readers back to the talk so that they can go back and look at the on-demand link. And it's a great way for the writer to get extra exposure. But it's just that you want to reiterate um, your main point and then also point the reader back to um, a resource where they can get more information or point them to the author so they can reach out to them, like that kind of thing. You just want to close it out and leave the reader wanting more at the same time. So once you've you know, filled out the template, you're kind of ready to go, but then you want to take a step back um, when it's time to write, and well, before that, I'm sorry, and go back to that, the core of like, when I, if I, if I'm the community manager and I approach you and I'm like, hey, Lauren, what is something that interests you? What do you like to do? You like flowers, you like unicorns or rainbows or whatever, and it's like, well, what do I pick? Like, what do you, what are some popular topics? How long do you want this to be? Just pick one thing. So I'll open it up to the audience and like ask you, like, what are some things you like to do? It doesn't have to be technical. It can be completely random, but like, what is something, what is an interest in, of yours? Amy Jim. Compost. Compost. Yeah. How do you compost? How do I compost? Mm -hmm. How do you get started with that? Um, well, I start with having a big mess of leftover vegetables and the kids not eating them on my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it first starts. But having an area in my backyard to understanding the principles of compost, of course, are the most important part because you might have the scraps, but it doesn't do you any good if you don't know how to activate them. But so we throw our scraps in the backyard in a bin and we add like a brown layer and a green layer and we make sure it's the consistency of a wet sponge as far as moisture goes. And then we put a lid on it and we have it in a black bucket so it heats up because mm -hmm. one of the things that, that needs to activate to change into dirt is heat for all the microorganisms to live and then we turn the compost over and then we let it set for a while because if you keep adding compost then it's never really going to season all the way through. And that's just sort of like that blanket process. And why do you compost? Why do I compost? Because no matter how much money I make, I will never pay for dirt. Okay. It's a very <laughs> concept to me to pay for dirt. Okay. And because we're mostly vegetarians and the kids don't eat their greens, there's like all of this waste and then all of the waste I don't want to pay for an extra garbage can, so it comes down to like being cheap for me. Like I don't want to pay for the garbage can and I don't want to pay for dirt. So, so that's, that's what I compost. Good for the environment and it helps you save money. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. I think I, I think I want to try composting. See? <laughs> you put 
you put together a great article. Now all you have to do is write it, you know? Um, so <laughs> um, so I, I asked that because that is the first, like literally she had the framework down to take that and put it in the template and add a couple sentences to it. And voila, she could publish it on Medium or LinkedIn and somebody's going to see it and wants to compost. I just wanted to like share just how easy it is to do that. Um, so I'm going to put some my own interest into the writer's template. And I actually did write something about this. Um, so I mentioned I got a puppy and then I gave her back to her uh, foster mother because it did not work out. Um, but it's been bothering me ever since because I just, I'm like, I learned so much in such a short amount of time and I want to talk to everyone about it, but sometimes I don't really know how to like put into words how I'm feeling or why I did it because it's just difficult to communicate things sometimes. So I was like, let me break it up and help me parse through my feelings and my why. And I came up with three reasons why dogs are mirrors to our souls, because they are. Um, and this is an analysis, this would be an analysis article from a first time uh, dog owner. So this is Willow. Um, if the screen were working right, everything would be red and she would be super black. And you see that her eyes are super black. And I swear she would just be looking like through me. And that's where I came up with the soul part. But I feel like she just, dogs just have this um, extra sense where they, they can just sense things that people don't always pick up on. And she sensed a lot about me. Um, so I'm Marjorie, uh, community manager, blah, blah, blah. So that's the person who will be writing. Um, and did I skip my? Oh, well, let's get my introduction. Um, so the problem that I want to address is why money is not the only factor that should be considered when you're thinking of purchasing a pet. Um, because you could have all the money in the world and still not be ready for what they bring, you know, to your life. Um, and. Dang, do I need to scroll back to my own template? Uh, please share one or two sentences why the problem is important. The problem is important to me because um, sh my experience with her changed my life. And it made me look into myself in a deeper way um, and made me reevaluate re how I treat other people and treat myself, um, and one or two sentences about the type of advice I want to share. I want to share why pets are great, <laughs> and why if you get one, it's worth persevering through because it's a really rewarding feeling, and why I probably will try again one day. Um, so, the, the takeaways that I, kind of came up with is, you know, a dog or a cat or fish, whatever your pet of choice is, um, but dogs specifically because they are pack animals, um, is a 100% loyal friend um, with no contingency, so like, or conditional. Uh, a person, I think that we all have um, hidden motives, and it doesn't have to be a bad thing. We all we all have something that we want for ourselves, and a dog just wants their person to be happy. Um, that just makes them happy. Um, so you better be re like ready to return that kind of love because it's a, a strong, follow you around, look at everything kind of love. <laughs> um, adopt for tomorrow, not for today. So, you know, going back to like, you know, having all the money and stuff it doesn't really mean anything. You have to evaluate, am I ready to think about 
you know, when I take a trip or when I add another family member to the house or uh, how many people I have coming in and out. Like there's just so many factors to consider when you add another living, breathing thing that cannot communicate with you um, to your life. Um, and when you train your dog, you're ultimately training yourself uh, because dogs are often reflections of the kind of training that they've had. And it takes time, it takes persistence, it takes structure. And what I came away with was it's complicated and it's so funny a writer's template is all about structure, right? Like structuring your thoughts and um, the way you want to do something. And when I was putting this example in, I was like, how am I going to equate Willow, which was her name, to structure? And I had just moved into my, I just moved into my first house. I don't really know my lifestyle like that yet, you know, away from my parents. I don't have a structure for myself. So it was very difficult for me to provide a structure for something else that needs it. And it was just so ironic that I'm talking about structure and the whole point of this was structure. But um, she taught me the power of being, um, you know, not being selfish and how it is important to give yourself grace and treat yourself kindly because how you treat and see yourself affects everyone else around you. And the same applies for your pets. So if you're stressed and um, they can sense that and they get agitated and it's just not a good environment for either one of you. So that is an element of me. That is an interest of mine, my dog was. Um, and I, I say all that to say um, writing it's not really about, you know, you have technical writers that do this for a profession and they get paid to do it for a reason because they're master communicators. Not master communicators, but they're experts at, at their, their subject matter. But you being developers or engineers or whatever your role is, you are an expert at what it is that you, um, you work at. And the person that's reading your piece or whatever comes across your content may not be. So they're taking everything you're saying and um, basically you don't have to be a technical writer to communicate something very well. You just, there's an effective way to do it and there's an ineffective way to do it. And writing is just another form of communication. So. You don't have to be a technical writer to write technically. You just have to write. And that's all I got. Okay. Um, I like the takeaway of, you know, the whole idea of what the, what the heck do I write about, right? And I like the idea that you said, like, write about a solution for something. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that I, that, that's a big takeaway for me because it's like, I have a solution for something. That means other people probably had the same issue and want a solution as well. And just because I had the same solution, or I had one solution, the next person won't have the, the same one, you know? So right. I, like, I, like, I like that as that first step of like, just figuring out what the heck I'm gonna write about. So, yeah. yeah, and just knowing solution. that like, your, your article or whatever you write is like your fingerprint. So though somebody else may write the same thing, you had something to add that the person didn't, the other person didn't, and vice versa. Writing is just like this amazing form of communication that just, it's a gift that kind of keeps on giving. Because not only are you blessing other people with new knowledge, but you are reinforcing your own knowledge because it takes a certain, part of your brain to be able to write what you know, kind of like teaching, if you can teach something, or that's probably not the same, but like I'm good at drawing, but I don't think I could give like a class on it, because it's like another way of communicating that, that thing, so I don't know, writing is just, 
it's something I'm passionate about and it just makes me like super happy to see how it changes lives and boosts people's confidence and or when somebody from a non native English speaking country reaches out to you and says, Hey, I read this article on X and it made me want to do this. It's just you know, it's a priceless feeling, so I just want more people to do it. And I finished super early, so I gave y'all like 20 minutes back. What oh, do you have a question? Yeah, I think it's on a slide I missed, but you were talking about the types. Or if you can types of articles. Like yeah. You talked about analysis, which might be that like ultra solution you're talking about. Like that. I can actually take you to my. Uh, I think that's what I do. This diagram. I guess yes. Did you find people like adopt certain ones over the other naturally? Um. So. It's it's. A lot of times people will come to me and ask what should I write <laughs> and I'm like well we do have articles that tend to perform better as in they just get more page views um, than other ones and that doesn't really mean anything. It, there's so many factors that play into page views like S SEO and, and um, the time of year or whatever you know trends but on architects specifically being that the persona is on Enable Architect, excuse me, I say that all the time, but Enable Architect is the site. Uh, on this site, specifically, the, the persona that we're talking to is really big on, you know, emerging trends because they are the people that kind of like communicate new ideas um, to, you know, sea level people. And so they have to be knowledgeable about operations, but they also have to know how to have that leadership kind of role. And so the, the articles that tend to do better are the analytical ones mm -hmm. and guides. Like um, our most popular, and this has almost uh, 80,000 page views, is an architect's guide to APIs. Um, and this is a long form, in-depth piece to the history of APIs. It's not really an opinion piece. It's just very fact-based. And I read somewhere that architects like um, they like this. Thought pieces are not popular. Basically, like they like concrete, like X plus Y equals Z, like that kind of thing. Um, and then on the flip side, we also have pieces like. Uh, uh, Fatigue, fatigue. Um, this one is probably our third or fourth most popular, and it's on something that's so like niche, like 5G, like specifically. Um, and this is more of a, I'd say this qualifies as a. Mm, a mix between news and I'd say news because it's like a personal kind of this is what we did and this is what came out of it so I can't really answer your question like there is, there is no right or wrong or what's going to do better or what do people typically write it just kind of depends on the subject matter um, yeah go ahead Angel. Say you have someone who is an architect, right, and mm -hmm. they want to write for you, but they haven't written before. You know, because there's a difference between like knowing and even speaking. You know, and then writing is a whole different thing. Do you, which which one of these sort of ideas would you pitch to them first, or like an easier, like a like a route in, an easy way in? Sometimes. Yeah, definitely opinion pieces, which. I'd probably almost change this to thought because that could be like career. <laughs> like what do you do on your day to day? 
and it's very easy to talk about like this is what I do rather than dissecting a project that you worked on and um, because that can be very brief. It's very straightforward. There, there aren't really many nuances. It is what it is. That's what I typically tell people to start off with. Um, it really, it really varies. It, it boils down to how I, if I'm reaching out to them first or they're coming to me expressing interest. If they're coming to me, most of the time they have filled out that author's form and they've said I'm a, a principal engineer, I work for Red Hat, like da da da, and I have this information to go off of, and I'm like, okay, so you like this, so how about a general X reasons why you want to try this? And it may or may not do well, but it just, it's a good way to like, especially putting the number in front of it and ways, it's a great way to help them, again, break down those takeaways. So. And it's like a goal, right? Like, yeah. I'm going to come up with these three things, three solutions, or three. Right. Solutions. Whereas if you start off with something like that APIs guide, there really is no goal. It's just this is what SOAP is, this is what REST is, this is what GraphQL is. And that, and that can take you down the rabbit hole really quickly because it's like, how much or how little do I write? So. Well, then it could. You could have another article out of it. And yeah. Add a whole article. A series. Only on soap. Yeah, exactly. So it, it really depends, and I try not to limit people. The only thing that we encourage people to do is to be vendor neutral um, and not down a certain product or service and not evangelize one, like, come from a place of, I like this because I like it. It doesn't guarantee that this is foolproof and it, it works and all this stuff come from a place of thought leadership and the way that you would like present like a TED talk kind of thing. Um, but yeah, no circumstances ever the same. Yes? Do you have any thoughts about how you would approach writing something you're an expert about versus something you're learning about? Because like for me, I find a lot of times when I write the most, it's when I'm just like doing this, like I'm learning a new technology or something, I'm just like, oh, this is something like, but I, I don't know that I really know how to tell somebody how to use it. I'm just really excited about it because it's new. Like I just went to a talk a few minutes ago and I want to tell the world, everybody just thinks so cool. Like, like what's the best way to... Yeah, like maybe, maybe from this framework, like how would you suggest... Like, is there a better format for that, or, or thoughts you have for somebody who might be trying to write that kind of article? I hate to be redundant, but literally copying that writer's template. So starting off with the why, the who, the what, and then taking, making the takeaway as the advice and then tying that back together at the end. So if you're working on, you were saying something that you're trying, you're not exactly an expert in it. Okay, you starting off with, I tried to do X today. This is why I did it. This is why I'm talking about it. This is my experience number one with it. This is experience number two, number three, whatever. And this is how it all ended up. And this is my advice to you. It's just a that tornado, that funnel shape yeah. is, to me, the easiest way to get somebody to at least get their feet wet. It seems like it could be a thought piece that leads into another article that's like a how-to once you yeah. figure the things out. Yeah, Yeah, because if you're ready to jump into a how-to, that's great. But a lot of people, that they feel like, I need to know how to write. Um, I guess the mechanic, like the structure, like I need to know structurally how to write. I know what to do, but I don't know how to put it, like formulate it on paper. Um, and so that's why I always just advise just start small. Once you've gotten the idea down, then you can go into the nitty gritty of everything that that project or whatever entailed. And that's why I answer Amy Jude's question, starting off with career or what I do is a lot easier. So. 
I just like them all. I just like, I just like reading. Yeah. Yeah. So would you say most of the articles are kind of about things people did in the past? And then is there, do you ever try to plan like, you know, Red Hat's doing something? So you're like, well, we're going to go as they're developing something along with the development. I've kind of I've heard of like briefing driven development. So I kind of try to do like write it out first so then you can kind of, I guess we can deploy. Oh, so like. Post articles as you're doing it. So, but I just, I find that sometimes if you do it in the past, you say, oh, I'll write it down, and then you don't get around to it. Yeah. Just like doing it as you're all right, making, making it more part of the development process, I guess. So, like, talking about your roadmap before you even start executing anything? Yeah, well, like, he was saying, like, I guess I'm writing on the takeaways and headings, and then I kind of go back and fill it in. It's easier for me to write it. Versus, oh, like reverse engineering, like the way you... Yeah, versus yeah. like, you did this thing, now how about we have an article, you know, and they're like, well, now I have to go back and dig through my notes and stuff like that. That's a really good question. It makes sense, but I mean, I got into technical writing. I I tended to do the how-tos because I wrote down my steps because I was trying to figure it out, right? I wrote down the steps because I knew the second, I'd mess up on one of the steps and I'd have to read my developer notes again. And so how-tos, I think, were easy for me for that, you know, rather, I'm not like a, a writer, but the so how-tos like a like like recipe. Like, yeah, yeah, so that's how I did that when I was like creating some open source projects was as I was doing that, I was writing a tutorial to myself and then it translated into, you know, the other thing. Yeah. yeah, it's almost like you can document your steps so that you, while well, you're documenting it, but then you're also helping the readers along the way and saying, well, this is the problem that I ran into and here's where I'm at. These are the steps that I'm taking. Um, so adding that personal touch to the documentation mm -hmm. so that the reader sees themselves in that article but like you can also yeah go along together with it yeah so it almost sounds like you t you're talking about more of like a a tonal switch like going from like um talking about telling a story in a story form and more of like i did it this is my first step second step third step for as opposed to like a story form um i don't know what i'm asking <laughs> It was, I mean, it was a good question. I mean, I think, I think too, like with with things like as you're doing it, as you're building your project, as you're changing your mind when you document that, that helps the maybe the end user understand why you did it a certain way. Yeah. You're like, oh, we started out doing this, but we ran into this framework wasn't completely open source, so we switched gears and we had to do it that way. Yeah, like yeah. There's, there's so many code repos where they're like, here's this new thing, and there's like no readme or blog post, yeah. like, why did you do this? So when someone releases it, I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> that's actually a... Why you did this. That's an approach I don't think we've even had. Yeah. And it's a good one, because I feel like it's a little bit more personal than saying something went well, and this is how it happened. You know, is, is that what you're saying? Like, yeah. I, I'm in a small cave where I'm just a human being sometimes. So I'm like trying to be efficient. I'm like, I'm doing this and I can publish it. And then, because otherwise I could go back and I might. Yeah. Absolutely. Do that after. I'm going to get your email and I'm going to bother you after this. For more ideas. <laughs> but, we're at time. That time? All right. Thanks, y'all, so much. June green means not recording anymore. Does green does green mean not recording anymore? Right, right. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. cool. Lauren, are you staying tonight? Yeah. Okay. I was gonna yeah, are you gonna go to the central event?